In this video, I'm going to show you how to do three different types of experiments in the non-tetrad experiment window of Star Genetics. To do this, I'm going to use the yeast sample exercise, which can be accessed by navigating to File New in the Star Genetics program. To remind you from what, what we saw in our user interface tour, there are six strains provided to us and two tester strains of MAT-A and MAT-alpha. For my first experiment, I would like to explore the mutations that strains 1, 2, and 3 may contain by plating them on selective media conditions. To do this, I can select Non-Tetrad Experiment, and this will bring up my active experiment window. The first thing I need to do is add my strains to the active experiment window, and there are several ways that you can do this. You can either drag and drop a strain from the strains box into the active experiment window. Alternatively, you can double click on a particular strain and it will automatically be added. Or if you want to add all of the strains to the active experiment window, you can select the add all strains button. However, because I would only like to look at strains 1, 2, and 3 in this first experiment, I'm actually going to remove the rest of the strains by clicking the red X in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so now I can select my media conditions. Because I don't want to perform any mating experiments, I'm not going to plate the strains on any lawns, and so I'm going to select none in this upper box. However, I would like to determine more information about the mutations that strains 1, 2, and 3 contain. And so I'd like to replica plate the strains onto multiple media conditions. In this lower box, I can see all of the selective media conditions that have been given to me by my instructor. And I can click on them individually and select replica plate. Or alternatively, I can select multiple at the same time by holding down the shift button and clicking and then selecting replica plate. I can now see the results of my experiment in the active experiment window. Media that is called complete contains all of the essential nutrients that are required for a strain to grow. The rest of the media conditions lack one or more nutrients that are required for a strain to grow. For example, this media here lacks leucine, which is an essential amino acid. And I can see that strains 1, 2, and 3 fail to grow under these conditions. From this experiment, I can conclude that strains 1, 2, and 3 contain a mutation in the leucine biosynthesis pathway. And they also happen to contain a mutation in the tryptophan biosynthesis pathway. To declutter my active experiment window a little bit, I'd like to get rid of some of the selective media conditions. To do this, I can simply click the discard button underneath a particular media condition and it will be discarded. So now I'm done with this experiment and I've come to a decision point. I need to decide whether I would like to discard the experiment before I start a new one. Or if I would like to save it, I can select New Experiment and this will automatically save the experiment for me in the Saved Experiments window. Because I may want to reference these results later, I'm going to select that option and click New Experiment. The experiment now appears in the Saved Experiments window at the bottom of my Star Genetics user interface. And it's called Experiment 1. However, to make it easier for me to reference later, I'm going to rename this experiment strains 1 through 3 and click OK. I'm now going to show you how to do another experiment in the non-tetrad experiment window. In this experiment, I would like to determine the mating type of strains 1 through 3, and I can do this in the non-tetrad experiment window. Again, I'm going to add my strains to the active experiment window by double clicking on them. And so strains 1 through 3 have been added. In order to determine whether strains 1, 2, and 3 are MAT-A or MAT-alpha, I'm going to mate them 
to the MAT A and MAT alpha tester strains that have been provided to me. In a previous experiment, I have already determined that strains 1, 2, and 3 contain leucine and tryptophan mutations. And the problem provided to me by my instructor told me that MAT A and MAT alpha contain lysine mutations. As a result, if I mate strain 1 with the tester strains, only the resulting diploid of a productive mating will be able to grow on media that lacks tryptophan and lysine. So I'm going to select that media condition in this bottom box and select replica plate. Now I can see in the active experiment window that strain 1, when mated with mat A, tester strain by growing it on the lawn of that strain cannot grow. This tells me that strain 1 cannot mate with a mat A strain. And because strain 1 can grow when mated with a mat alpha tester strain, that tells me that strain 1 must be mat A. Likewise, I can analyze the data from the matings of strain 2 and 3 with the tester strains. Here, strains 2 and 3 can produce a diploid when grown on a lawn of the MAT A tester strain, and then select for diploids by growing it on media that lacks tryptophan and lysine. I can now conclude that strain 1 must be MAT A, and strain 2 and 3 must be MAT alpha, and this will help me in the next experiment that I would like to perform. I'm going to save this experiment by selecting New Experiment, which automatically saves my active experiment. And I'm going to rename this experiment in the Saved Experiments window as Strains 1 through 3 Mating Type and select OK. We're now ready to do the third experiment that I'd like to show you in the Non-Tetrad Experiment window. I'm now going to show you how to do a third type of experiment in the non-tetrad experiment window. And this experiment type is a complementation test. Again, I'm going to continue to use strains 1, 2, and 3 since we have already explored them in some depth. To get started, I'm going to select strain 1, 2, and 3 by adding them to my active experiment window. To remind you, I have already figured out that strain 1 is mat A, strains 2 and 3 are mat alpha, and all three of the strains contain mutations in the leucine and tryptophan biosynthesis pathways. I have also been told by my instructor that all of these mutations are recessive. As a result, I can conduct a complementation test. To do this, I'm going to mate strain 1 with strains 2 and 3, and mate strain 2 with the other two strains, and likewise the same for strain 3. To do this, I'm going to actually select all three strains in this first box, so I can do all of the complementation tests at the same time. And Although I know that strains 1, 2, and 3 contain mutations in both the leucine and tryptophan biosynthesis pathways, I'm going to investigate the leucine mutations first by replica plating on media that lacks leucine and click replica plate. So now when I analyze the results, I know that strain 1 is an opposite mating type of strain 2, so they should be able to form a diploid. However, because the resulting diploid is unable to grow on media that lacks leucine, that tells me that the mutations in strain 1 and strain 2 must be contained in the same gene and they fail to complement. However, when I mate strain 1 with strain 3 and grow it on media that lacks leucine, I can see that the resulting diploid can grow in this selective media condition. This tells me that the mutations in strain 1 and strain 3 do complement each other, which means that they must be in different genes within the leucine biosynthesis pathway. You can continue to analyze the rest of the results in this active experiment. For now, I'm going to save my experiment by clicking on New Experiment. 
and so that I can easily reference it later, I'm going to name this strains 1 through 3 complementation. We're now ready to explore the Tetrad experiment window.